Okay. Right. Higher or lower than a six? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, well. Let's get ready. Hi, my name's Jason. Welcome to another painting lesson. We were just uh, waiting for our audio to be uh, coming on. Right, what we got going up here? Now, we're using a 20 by 16 canvas and uh, I've put, um, using some black and grey gesso, I've used some grey gesso to do an indication of uh, a background rock there and then black gesso just to block in the, this area where you've got the foreground and then uh, I've put some liquid white all over the white area and all over this black and then uh, I've put some liquid clear all over the black area and then, <laughs> then I put some colour on it. I put a little bit of midnight black and Van Dyke brown and a bit of Prussian blue down here. But that's the hardest bit, doing this bit. <laughs> right, now let's get our uh, trusty two inch brush. <coughs> and we're ready. So uh, let's, put in, let's put in a warm sky. I almost was going to do a blue sky, but I feel like a warm sky. Let's get some crimson. So I'm just pulling out a little bit of crimson, lizard and crimson, and tapping on the brush. And you tap the bristles to get an even distribution of colour. Okay, now let's start, let's start about here. Just using crisscross strokes. There's a warm spot in the sky there. All the way across. All the way across. Don't worry about this mountain here. We'll, we could either leave it or we can uh, we can start playing around with it afterwards and putting in some colour and things. Let's just put some crimson in here. Okay. Now let's get a little bit, a tiny bit, phthalo blue. Still, I haven't washed the brush. Still haven't washed it. So let's put in some blue at the top, and let's bring it into the red. Let's let the, the blue and red meet. Again, I'm using this sort of stroke at the moment. You can use crisscross strokes. Or this version of a crisscross. The reason we use that is you get lots of little lines in there, and they sort of mix together the red and the crimson and the blue and it makes it easier to blend. Okay, let's bring some blue in there as well. And lighter, 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 lighter. Okay, that'll do for our little sky. Let's get the uh, get a clean, dry two inch brush. Clean and dry. And let's very lightly, let's crisscross strokes. Just using that crisscross. And let's blend where the crimson and the blue meet. Just so when one colour starts, the other finishes, and you can't really see where one starts and finishes. And down here as well. Let's blend it. Okay, and in here as well, I'm just tapping. It's a lot lighter down here. And then all the way across. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's put in a few clouds. Let's use the fan brush. Let's go into some... I was using crimson, so let's use a bit of crimson. A little bit of the Prussian blue. Let's make a uh, sort of a lavender colour. Prussian blue and alizarin crimson, just on the fan brush. And let's put in, let's put in some little clouds. She's using a straight stroke. Let's put in a cloud that sort of lives here, streaking. And then another one sort of goes there. Well, it doesn't really matter. However you want them to be, or maybe there's something else you can do actually. You go into a bit more of the blue, and then a little bit of the white. And you 
can make this make this lighter sort of a light lavender color and you can start putting in a few light pressure these are a bit lighter very light pressure and let's put in a few clouds back there really small ones these are really far away and I've used very light pressure so only a little bit of the color comes off maybe there's a big one there so back into our original color this is a biggish one just using streak streak streaky sort of motions and sort of comes across and maybe there's one there now I'm trying to keep the sky flat because we've got a lot of uh, angles coming on in here so it just changes it a little bit let's use a uh, one inch brush one inch brush clean and dry <laughs> Clean and dry. And let's just go across. Let's just go across. Just blend that out. Just using straight strokes. The clouds are straight, so straight strokes work nicely. Across these as well. These distant ones, are miles away. The more you blend them, the lighter they get as well. And they'll disappear. <laughs> Okay, and you can even let's uh, put a little highlight in some of these clouds. Maybe there's a bit of light, and the light sort of coming there, and let's just lighten some of those bits. Just getting a little bit of light on the end of the bristles. Just here and there. Let's just give it a little bit of depth. Okay, that'll do. We don't want to do too much. Just a little highlight here and there. Okay, let's go back to our fan brush. And using that colour we was just playing around with, let's go a bit more of the blue. A bit more of the blue. And then some more white. Let's make a light colour. Sort of, a, sort of a lavender, lavender to the blue side. Just mixing on the fan brush. And let's uh, let's start putting in these distant hills. There was a, there's a mountain, or a uh, cliff edge. It's sort of here. So it's just behind this one. Go straight through that cloud. Don't worry about that. It sort of lives. Is there. I'm just pulling down, just pulling down. Just pulling down. It sort of goes there. Let's put the indication of a, a, a cliff edge that's way back, and, and this one as well. This one here. Just putting in the indication of the cliff is you can even put in a little a bit there and use it then when there's hardly any paint on your brush you can put in the indication of a distant area there. But the gesso has kind of done that for you. That's why the grey the grey gesso is really good when you're doing these sort of paintings because then you can uh, create distance distance in it by just putting the liquid white on. I'm just using the one inch brush and I'm just pulling down just blend that out a little bit. Just pulling down, pulling the colour down. We'll leave that. So it's sort of got a little bit of light lightness at the top. And maybe that bit down. Okay. Right, now let's uh, move forward a little bit. Just using the one inch brush, let's grab some of that black and brown colour and let's make this a bit more obvious here, sort of there. This is where our cliff edges. And that one as well, sort of there. Just putting a little bit of colour in. 
Okay, okay. Right, let's uh, let's use let's use the filbert brush. Let's use the filbert brush. You can use any of the brushes. It's up to you. Right, let's go for. Uh, let's highlight these. We've got some black, so let's use a bit of black. Let's use a bit of black and blue. Black and blue. And let's grab some white. Let's make a. Ooh, let's throw in a bit of brown in. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Just trying to make a little bit of a darkish grey, bluish grey. Oh, the black. Okay, that's that's quite nice. And then I'm just pulling the paint on the brush. It's not loads of paint, but. Okay, now then, our light, let's say our light's coming this way, so it's hitting, hitting the edge of this, so let's think about the angle of this, and let's just lightly put in these, these highlights where the light's hitting, and there's some hitting there, just thinking of, thinking of angles shapes a bit there Just a bit more of that color maybe there's a rock face there and then the lights hitting there and it's coming forward you can create all kinds of little shapes and just pull it in the direction that the rock is Right, let's go into this colour that we used before for the uh, clouds, sort of a reddish crimson, a bit more of the white. And let's pick out areas where there's more light hitting. Maybe there's more, there's more light hitting there. So let's put that highlight in there. We're just pulling down, pulling in the in the direction of the rock. Maybe there's a bit there. Just pull that down and then that. So you're just picking out areas that you want to be a bit lighter. And, and this bit there. And where, wherever you want. It's up to you. Just grabbing a bit more of the colour. More of the white in there. All the crimson. Let's uh, do a little bit of light hitting there. Maybe there's another bit sort of, kind of sort of there. Wherever you want. This is just a uh, nice, easy way of creating all sorts of cliffs. It's uh, picking up the colours that we I put on originally, the browns, the blues black and the lights just zinging through and if you get any areas that are too bright just grab in, grab some of the black and, and you can darken it no problem just grab the uh, one inch brush and just pull that down just to blend that bit here and there blend areas out. Okay. Now this side, so if our light's hitting this way, we'll just stick to the dark colour. Just stick to the dark colour and put in some areas where the rock is. Just wiggle in your brush wherever you want. Totally up to you. You could even it's just uh, just pushing up, so you get a little ridge of paint, and you get a little ridge on the end of the filbert brush. Let's imagine there's a uh, a tree right on the top there. I'm just touching, just touching. Maybe there's another one there. I'm just using the shape of the uh, filbert brush to create the shape of the tree, the roundness. There's a few up there. 
and then using the line of brush using the line of brush get a little bit of that color I dipped into some paint thinner let's get a thin color thin color and then let's put in a few little tree trunks indications they're quite far off we don't know where we're miles away then you can even she even had a little highlight on those get a little bit of the white and just touch here and there just highlight those well, they're miles away so <laughs> we don't have to worry about detail there let's bring this land this land along there maybe there's a just pull that down a little bit create the shape Maybe there's a bit that sticks out here. Just pull it out. So, however you want it, it's up to you. Here and there. You want to keep some of this dark area just so it makes sure the areas that are getting light, bits of light that's just zinging through here and there. Let's just use the uh, one inch brush, it's a bit quicker. Let's just bring some of this down in these cliff faces. And then maybe, maybe there's some water. So let's go into some of this white and maybe into this color as well. And just, just tap in, let's get some of that. And then just touch, pull down, touch, pull down. Wherever the water is, maybe it's sort of there, comes down. There and then it, maybe it comes out here. So I'm just touching, pulling down. This is where the water is. <laughs> it is now. And then lightly, just go across. Go across. That's where our water is. And now let's uh, start putting in some areas where there's little grass. Let's grab some of the. Uh, brown and black. Just tap on the one inch brush. Maybe there's some grass. It sort of comes down there. What we, we've already got our uh, dark in so we don't have to worry too much about it. But there's areas where, where you want land and just tap it in. Tap it in and then pull down bring some of that dark in the water and then go across okay and then uh, let's do the same on this side maybe the land it comes right down comes in here. it comes there and goes around and maybe it comes across here and then again just pull down little bits and go across okay now let's highlight some of these grassy bits let's go into let's start putting a bit of color in let's get a bit of sap green into our mixture here so I want to keep a little bit of the crimson color sap green maybe a little bit of cad yellow some of the cad yellow. Still there, fairly dark. Right? We're just touching, touching some uh, green grass. Actually, that's a uh, perfect colour for our shadow side. Have some grass that sort of grows up here. Maybe the grass you can grows grows down. There's a little sorts of uh, things growing you can create uh, different areas of land with our dark dark grass maybe there's some grass up here and you can put it in where, wherever you want areas have little bits of grassy bits growing down just put them in 
it's up to you, it's your painting, you're the master at your canvas, <laughs> so you can do whatever you want to do on yours. Okay, now I'll just pull a little bit of that colour in, a little bit of that colour in and then go across, very lightly. Okay, and then I'm going to go into some a bit more of the cad yellow into our colour. There's a bit of yellow ochre in there, just to make it brighter. And touch, a little roll of paint, and let's this side. This side gets more colour because there's more light coming this side. Again, just tapping, just tapping in the areas where you want grass grow down, look at this grass coming down here. Just tapping, just tapping. And if it gets too bright, just give it a tap and it'll disappear. It'll disappear on you. It'll start blending with the colour that's underneath. areas and think about layer of the land, layer of the land, and then just tap a little bit of that grass into the water just as our reflection or if you want you could do this painting upside down do all the reflections and then flip it back again <laughs> you might have seen that before <laughs> okay let's, let's just use a clean one inch brush and lightly pull down, pull down those little grassy bits and go across, go across. Okay, let's uh, let's start bringing that water forward. Let's bring that water forward. Let's use a fan brush, fan brush, and let's get some of the white. Let's go into that bluey, purpley colour. Maybe we'll get a bit more of the phthalo blue. Let's make it a bit more blue. And let's start cleaning up this water. When the water's flowing, let's put an indication where the water is. Just using straight strokes. It's flowing around here. Touching in some paint, and it's going there, across here, and then out. Just using flat strokes. Just put all kinds of little actions, many actions as you want. It's up to you. Right, maybe, maybe there's, there's a few bushes. Just put in a few little bushes. Just grabbing some. Uh, black and brown and Prussian blue on the one inch brush. Let's put in maybe there's maybe there's a hole there. Oh, I see something. <laughs> maybe there's a hole in the rock and it's and it's just creating a bit of a light spot here. Just tap 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 tap. Maybe there's a light spot there. Let's go into some of the dark colours and let's put in put in a bush. Got a bush there, maybe it's sort of there's a couple there. Back to our uh, one inch brush and let's uh, dip into a little bit of liquid white. A little bit of liquid white on the end of the bristles and then go into some of our yellow. Yellows, some green. A nice, nice green. And turn over, so you, you pull it out very flat. Sorry, you pull, you pull in one direction, and you create a little bush shape. A little bush shape. You get one of those on your bristles, and you turn it over, so the rounded part of the brush is on the top, and then you just touch and push, touch and push, 
very lightly, very lightly, and you get all those little lacy effect. Okay, and then what you can do is where well, you've got an option, you can either scratch in some colours or let's just get some liquid white. Let's use what's on the uh, liner brush, we've still got a little bit of blue from those <laughs> trees. Let's put in a few little sticks and twigs in amongst all that. But then don't forget a thin paint or stick to a thicker paint. And then there's a few little sticks and twigs there. Now, now I've got the liner brush, that's it. <laughs> sticks and twigs everywhere, grassy bits. Maybe there's another bush that lives on there. Maybe there's one more there. Let's go into our blacks, browns. Maybe there's one that lives right there. Right there. Oh, well, it does now. <laughs> and that's uh, the same again. Pull in one direction. Got some yellow ochre, cad yellow, sap green. Turn it over. Touch. Very lightly, just touching. Maybe there's two there. And that's let's put in a bit of dark. Maybe there's a reflection of that one. Sort of there. Let's put a reflection in there. Oops, a bit too much paint. Maybe okay. Here we go. Now, if I if I uh, brush over that, that's going to uh, go a bit crazy. So let me show you uh, a little technique. If you ever make a mistake, just whip it off <laughs> with a knife, and then uh, back to your uh, brush. Let's just tap in. A bit of colour. <laughs> that easy. That's the beauty of oil paint. If you make any mistakes, you can just rectify it very easy. I'm just very lightly going over that. Very lightly, one hair and some air. And back to our fan brush. Let's put a bit of. Just tap a little bit of the blue colour over that just to clean it up. It's just so we know that that's water. <laughs> Gives it more of a reflective look. Okay, now uh, let's use our liner brush. Grab a little bit of that blue and white. Let's put in a few little, little sticks at the base of that. In the water. Okay, so uh, a little bit different and something for you to have a go at. Gives you a good idea of how to do a little, nice little background. And let's uh, sign this one, call it finished. Well, I'm just getting some uh, paint thinner, some bright red, thin as ink. And while I'm signing my name, I just want to thank everybody for watching. I'm uh, amazed at the response I'm getting on uh, YouTube, it's been fantastic. So, uh, if you're enjoying this lesson, and please subscribe and like and share and and, and uh, enjoy your painting. J B. Okay, thanks very much for watching this one, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.